Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a realistic laser pointer effect for your videos. So these are two music videos that recently dropped, Cardi B with Kanye West and Lil Durk. And they have this amazing scene where he's standing this fully 3D environment, and there's a ton of these laser pointers just flying in and illuminating him. I thought it looked really cool. I think the exact same week, this JID and J. Cole video dropped as well, where they have something very similar. So I'm gonna show you how to create this from scratch, but I also made a brand new asset pack, which is available on my website. For those of you who just wanna download and drag and drop these clips into your footage right away, you can check it out here, super cool. There's two tutorials in this pack. One shows you how to change the color of any of these lasers and how to actually use them. Very easy, just drag it in, change the opacity. You can use this in any video editing software, and it even comes included with all of the Blender project files for all of the varying and different looks of the lasers that are in there. So you guys can actually create your own all within Blender. And of course, there's a tutorial in there holding your hand and walking you through. So if you're interested in that, click the link below. Either way, let me show you how to do this in Blender. I chose Blender for this because I think it's a bit easier um, trying to piece together an After Effects. Blender is 100% free, so even if you're not used to 3D, you're not used to Blender, follow these steps and I'll show you exactly how you can get started creating some cool lasers. So in Blender, our laser starts with a cylinder. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Shift A. I'm going to add in a mesh and a cylinder. So we can delete our cube for now. And we're gonna go ahead and grab that cylinder. I'm gonna click tab to switch over to edit mode. You can also use this little drop down. Go to edit mode. I'm gonna use the face select mode. So clicking here, grab that face, and I'll just click E and extrude that so that we have a longer cylinder. Now what we wanna do is we actually want to slice this up into different segments. So I can select the cylinder. Let's actually go back into edit mode. So I'll click tab. And you're gonna see all these tools on the left here. The one you want is the loop cut. So we'll go ahead and grab that. And you can just click a bunch of times and just add a bunch of these cuts onto your cylinder. So that looks fine. Again, we'll go back into object mode. And we're gonna go and bend this so that it looks more like a realistic laser and not just a tube. So we'll grab it. We're gonna go over to the modifiers tab. I'm gonna add in a subdivision surface first. This basically just smooths out the mesh. And you see here, whenever we do that, it kind of looks like a weird like hot dog or something. So it's control Z to undo that. And we'll just tab in edit mode and face select. And we'll go ahead and just select that face and delete it, delete the faces. So that we have an empty tube, same with the bottom. So tab, object mode, go and add that subdivision surface, smooth everything out, put the viewport to two. And then let's add in a displace modifier. We can go ahead and just click new and just use the basic default texture they have here. Then we're gonna go and click on the texture properties window here, and we're gonna go and change this around a bit. So under type, we want to change this to clouds. You're gonna see immediately, we now have more of like a jagged sort of projection on our cylinder. It's not so much straight. Now you guys can play around with this to try and um, get the beam looking the way you want. You can use noise if you want more of like a disheveled laser beam. You don't just have to make a laser pointer with this tutorial. You guys can make whatever laser you want. Anyway, play with the size until you have more of that laser beam shape. And you can also go to your modifiers and play with the strength on your displace. So now we need to go in and create the texture for our laser beam. So first of all, let's switch to the rendered viewport shading. So in the top right, click here. And we'll just turn the light off for now. All right, so now let's create our laser material. Before we do that, let's thin this up a little bit. We want it to be a thin laser beam. So we'll select here, go to this yellow box, your object properties, and take your scale, your X and Y, and I'll just make that like 0.1 for both the X and the Y. We can change that later. Keep the Z the same. It's basically your distance, but there we go. Bit more of a thin laser beam, but we still have that shape with the displacement. So we'll just select it. We're gonna switch over to the shader editor and we'll click to create a new material. Now, normally to create a laser uh, emissive texture, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is scroll down here to your emission. You can do it over here in your uh, material properties as well. You go to your emission, you choose a color. So we'll put that up, make it red, and then you bump up the strength. And to actually see this in Eevee, you need to make it glow. So you go, to, you go over to your render properties. And again, we're doing this in Eevee, and you just enable bloom. There you go, you have an easy laser just like that. So that's the standard way of doing it, uh, but we're gonna make it a little bit more in depth. And then I'll show you how to set up our camera and point the lasers wherever you want. And of course, render and place back in After Effects. 
In our shader editor, let's go ahead and click Shift A. Again, make sure Use Nodes is on. We'll search for a noise texture. Place that right there. And then we're also going to search for a mapping node. Place that here. And a texture coordinate node. So we have our noise texture mode here. We're just going to add a bit more um, texture onto the surface of this so that we can kind of make it look like the beam is intersecting with dust particles, which will make it look a bit more realistic here. And then we have the mapping here, which is essentially just telling this texture to map onto this object. So just go ahead and take object here, connect it to the vector of the mapping, and then take the vector of your mapping and connect it to the vector of your noise texture. Now to control the noise texture before we actually apply it to our texture, we want a color ramp node. So shift A, drop in a color ramp. Go ahead and connect the factor here. This will let us control things a little bit better. And then you can take the color of our color ramp and connect it to our emission. You're gonna see everything go black and white. So because we have sliders in our color ramp, this will basically allow us to see if I take the black and push it up, it'll allow us to lower down and see that noise texture. So if I just put the blacks up, there you go. Now we see more of this transparent beam and it's just black for now, but we can change the black transparent very easily just by selecting, going to your material properties and then scroll down to settings here and then blend mode, you wanna put that as alpha blend. Now this white value here, this is essentially going to be the brightness, the glow amount. So you can place that you can place this sort of close to the black. So I'll just pull it in like that. And you'll see this will brighten up a bit more. And then for your noise texture here, you can change around the scale to get a different pattern, the roughness, really up to you on how you want to make that look. I honestly think the default is fine. You can also play with the mapping here, change the x scale and y scale change around the scale, change around rotation. It's really up to you. You have all the controls for how you want to make this look right there. Now let's go in and add our red color. And we're not going to change the color here like you may be thinking. We're going to create another color ramp. So Shift A, create a color ramp. We'll place that here. On this color ramp, we're going to take both of these little inputs and we're going to change them to whatever color we want. So let's make this a red beam. Let's actually make it a green beam because I made every single one red. I'm kind of sick of making red beams. So double click here, make this green. Again, put your lightness up so you can see that. Now we're going to mix together the color we want with the mixture of the noise texture here. We want to search for a mix RGB. So mix RGB. Place that there. And this is our first color. This is our second color. So go ahead and take the color. We can deconnect. We can disconnect from our, from our emission. Put the first color ramp here, put the second color ramp there, and change from mix to multiply. And here it is, multiply. And then we can take our color and place that into the emission. Give it a few seconds. Great, looking good. All right, so we can also take this factor here and bump that up. So it's gonna just basically give it a ton more color, but while keeping in the fractal that we tried to create earlier. And again, this is your control. So if you don't want, you want more of a clear, clean beam, you, you take the black and you push it down. And if you want more of the little particles or a broken up beam, you can take that black and you can crunch that and you can go pretty far with it. So our beam is almost complete. Let's just go ahead and take this color ramp, uh, the one where we're creating, where we're adding in that noise texture. Let's take the alpha here and plug it into the alpha under our emission strength. So pretty cool. Again, if you wanted to click on the cylinder, go back to your modifiers. If you want to make like a crazier laser beam, if I was just to push up the strength on uh, my distortion or my displace, you now have this kind of like distorted, crazy looking beam. So maybe you're making like a sci-fi film or you want to like shoot lasers out of your eyes or something. This is still a good template to build upon that. If you want to make anything brighter here, you go back to your emission strength and just crank that up or down. So that's how you create your laser. Now let me show you how you can actually take these lasers, point them at your specific footage, and then and then animate them so that they're tracking whatever you want in your footage. So we're gonna go ahead and set up our camera. So we'll grab our camera here. Before we do that, let's actually click on the world properties here um, and take the strength and just put it down to zero. We don't want any light interfering with the footage that we're gonna put in here. You can also go to our render settings Go down to film and check on transparent and then let's set up our camera. So we'll click on the camera, go to our data pro we'll go to our object properties and I'll just start putting in zeros for our location and rotation. So now we just have our camera pointing down at the world position. So 
you gonna go ahead and take the rotation I'll rotate 90 degrees on X and if we pop into camera view let's get the laser out of the way for now pop into camera view that looks okay and now we need to place a plane in front of that camera and that's gonna be the placeholder for our footage so go ahead and shift a and I'll add in a plane and we'll click G to move that over and again we'll go to the properties and for the X put that at 90 now if you switch to your camera view here and if you go to your output properties it's going to show you the resolution here so if you change that so depending on the resolution of your footage normally 1920 by 1080 it's going to work or you can bump it up to 4k if you want but i'll keep it at 1920 by 1080 and then i'll go ahead and just change the plane so that it fits this camera view as best as possible we'll take our scale x or scale y if you guys want to grab and move it and just like that it doesn't matter if it kind of intersects over a tiny bit we're not going to render out with the footage this is really just our placeholder so I'll double click on the plane and name that footage and then i'll just put in a random texture for now so to place your footage on this plane you want to select it you want to go to your uh, shader editor again it should still be open and you want to click shift a and add in an image texture and we'll plug that into the emission for that plane Next, you want to click open and just find whatever footage you'd like to load into here. So I have a bunch of royalty free footage uh, right here. Click open. You should see that pop up. And again, if you don't want all this gray, go to your world properties, put that to zero. One issue here, if we go to our timeline and we scroll, this is just a still image. So let's go back to the shader editor. And we're going to take the frames here and we'll just put that up to 1000. Uh, it has if the video has more than 1000 frames, you can, of course, add more. What's up to you? This one's only 250 frames and it's still not moving. So back to shader editor, you want to check on auto refresh. And there we go. All right, so we have our footage. Let's click off here. Go and grab our laser and start pointing it towards our footage. And this is where we need to go to the object properties and start messing things around. I think this laser is way too big, uh, but for now we'll just rotate 90 degrees on X. Actually, let's do negative 90. And we'll click G, move it over, and then we'll take the Z scale and we'll just play around with the scale to make this look the way that we want from camera view. So obviously in our camera view, this was way too large. Or maybe 0 0.01 or even 0 0.005, depending. It really depends on how far you made the plane from the um from the camera if you wanted to if you don't want to mess with the scale of the beam you could always just make the plane a little bit further away from the camera and then reline it up and i want to make sure that the tip of it is right in front of the plane so we'll scroll through again i'm just clicking g to move this towards i want to add something to the tip of this so that it looks like wherever the laser is hitting on our footage it's lighting up just like a normal laser pointer would see for example it's not just a beam even though it's kind of hard to see the beam you want that dot going on so that you can see the actual target of the laser okay and you see there's still black on our beam here even though we set um, our settings to alpha blend um, also while we're here make sure shadow mode you set that to none so that it's not casting any shadows on the plane uh, but go back to your shader editor with your beam selected instead of connecting the alpha to the alpha here you want to take the color and connect that to the alpha and there you go it's going to go all that black is going to be transparent because we have it at alpha blend so again make sure you're on alpha blend and you can now see through the beam so i'm going to click shift a and i'm going to add in a sphere so let's scale that down and we'll click g and kind of just from different angles try and position it on the tip of our beam we don't need all the fancy craziness that we did here so we'll go ahead and just create a new uh, material for the sphere and we'll just Create a green emission, then colors our beam, and we'll bump up the emission strength. And if you want it to be even brighter than the beam, of course, you can go higher on the emission strength than you did with the beam. Good, I think I'll scale that down a bit more. So now what I want to do is I want to connect this, I want to connect the sphere to our beam. Let's go to our laser and apply our displace. Once you've messed around with that, then let's select both of them and we're going to click Control J to join those together into into one object here 
And now if I was to click G and move that around, you'll see how the sphere is sticking to our beam. So pretty easy. Also, if you ever want to change any of the textures individually, go to our laser and our material properties. Um, here's the two of them. This one we can name. This one is just the sphere. So we'll name this um, dot. And this one is the laser. We'll name this laser beam. And of course, you can change those. Pop in there at any time if you want to change things. If for any reason you don't like the look of how things are. First, let's make sure that this is touching near our footage. So we'll go to our timeline. And it's pretty simple. Just go to your laser object. Go to your object data properties. We can just go ahead and just click and drag down to set keyframes. And then just drag a bit. And you can take your rotation here. You can take your rotation here and move it. But you see we have an issue. Uh, the origin is in the wrong spot. So let's go back for a second. The origin, basically where this is rotating from, rotating from here. So if you see, I click R, rotating around from where the dot is. Go ahead and grab your cursor. Set the origin at the end of the beam here. Just make sure that's aligned right, it looks fine. And then we'll go ahead and select the laser. In object mode, we'll go to object, set origin, um, origin to 3D cursor. And it resets our position, so let's go ahead and just Fix that and we'll click I to set that keyframe. But either way, it should be rotating from our origin, which is right here. So looking good. Let's go back to camera mode. And again, just scroll along as our footage goes and say you want to make this on the center of his chest. Just grab one of your rotations. You can even just click and point it where you want. And click to set those keyframes. So we created a little animation of our beam going from left to right. And it's really that easy, guys, um, for animating it. If you want to go further, uh, again, just add in a couple more keyframes. You can even change around like the location of the beams, but pretty simple. Now, if you want to have more beams, you just select your laser and you click Shift D, and then you can just move this where you want, place right there. And keep in mind this duplication, it's going to duplicate all your keyframes. So we'll just delete all those. And at the start, we'll go in here and we'll start our, we'll place it where we want. So we want it like this, set those keyframes, scroll, and just make any keyframe adjustments for what you want this laser to do. And this is the manual way of doing it, but that is your basics. Now, if you want to add in some random movement instead of hand animating every single laser, say you just want a bunch of lasers kind of tracking around, pretty simple. Grab laser or duplication, we'll click Shift D and we'll put it right about here. We'll delete all of our keyframes and then again, we'll probably have to click G and move it again. And we'll set keyframes at our starting position. So at one, click and drag down. So we want to have a keyframe here, but this keyframe doesn't really matter. You can even just grab it and move it over. What you, want to do, what you want to do now is switch over to your graph editor. So if you open up here, again, make sure you have your laser selected to see this. You have your X, Y, Z, your rotation, your scale. So say you want to go to your, uh, say you want to go to your Y rotation here. What you can do is click N. It's going to open up this menu. Go over to modifiers, add modifier, and noise. If you're not seeing that, scroll until you find that. Um, if I was to click play, you can see it's just super jiggling back and forth on that Y rotation. Let's click back on there. And you can actually take the scale here. If you raise the scale, it's going to kind of smooth out that so it's more up and down, not as jittery. And same with strength. You can make that um, if you want it to go super high up or if you want the movements a little more subtle. So you can add in custom um, movements just by adding in those modifiers to different axes. So Maybe make this smaller, raise the strength. And then you can just click this little copy for the clipboard. Let's go to maybe X rotation, paste that in, and then just change things around. Tracking around at random. And that way you don't have to hand animate because you can actually select this. So you want to add in another one with another random animation, Shift D, and then you grab your new duplication. And then you just go in and change the phase. This will kind of just change the randomation change the phase of this or change the scale to get a completely different animation. It's up to you. Phase is kind of just giving you like a different seed pretty much. So you can have similar ones or you can completely 
mess with this mess with the noise or add on to different axes so, so once you guys are ready to render let's go over to our output properties um output here we can just click and we'll just create a new folder name this tutorial render and we'll name this lasers and accept um file formats i like going tiff Make sure in your compositing, check off use alpha. And also in here, you see your footage. You don't want to render that out. So turn this off in the viewport and in the render. We can do a test render image. Looks all right. You want to render it out with the black and white, not transparent. Let's go render animation. And you see how fast this render flies through in Eevee. Pretty easy. So I'll go ahead and render this out and I'll give you this clip in this entire project file free to download below. So if you really wanted to, you could just download that project file, change around your animation and hit render. If you want to get more in depth with realistic motion blur, different types of glow, all the different types of 3D lasers that I included in that pack, there's preset project files in that paid pack if you do want to pick it up. And there's a tutorial where I walk you through how to set up and how to use it, how to change it and create different looks. In your project bin, you want to right click, import multiple files, and you can do this in most any editing software where you import multiple files. You know, you can do it in Resolve, Premiere, a bunch of them. Go ahead and select the first file and force alphabetical order, import as footage, click import, we'll click done, and there we go. We now have our laser render, and all you have to do is grab whatever footage you want. So let's kind of match up the exact one we we're working with transform fit to comp and then all you need to do is change the blending mode to add super easy if this is a bit too bright for you go to your effects and presets go to your effects and presets just drop in a little brightness contrast onto there and lower down the brightness if you guys want to change the color you can add in a little hls color balance and now you have any laser that you want so if you did enjoy please leave a like on the video comment down below what you'd like to see next you guys do choose to purchase the pack. Thank you guys for the support. I greatly appreciate it. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.